All right, here we go with section 3.5. So this one's all about logical operators and specifically we're going to be looking at, you guessed it, <laughs> using the highlight tool already so uh so we have and or and not and these are the ones that we're going to to take a look at and the way that this works we're able to take two or more uh boolean expressions and combine them into one compound boolean expression and that sounds complicated but once you kind of see how this works it's not uh, it's not too bad so it, it makes it I think it makes our code easier to understand, easier to use, uh, simplifies it, uh, shortens the you know the, the code up, all that kind of good stuff. So and and or, and then we'll also use not, which it, it, I mean just logically, it's going to reverse whatever we have. So we'll take a look at uh, at the not operator as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the next slide. And here we go. Just a little example uh, of what I was just talking about. So in this particular if statement, we have if temperature is less than 20 and minutes are greater than 12. So we've combined two things here. With what we've done earlier in the chapter, we would have had to dump, done uh, you know, some sort of nested if in here or whatever to get these two things. Uh, now all of a sudden we can use and, which is a reserved word, Boom, look at this. We can just go ahead and include two in one statement and we're good to go. So I, I don't know why we're in the danger zone at this, but somehow we are. All right, so so here we go. The other thing that you might see when you are writing this, you notice this just has, you know, the expressions written like this with the and in between. You can also write them with parentheses and, and it doesn't matter. It's not required, uh, at least for this. I mean, obviously, if we had some other things in here, it might be required. But for what we're doing right now, it's not. But I find that sometimes students, especially first starting out, they like using parentheses to set each one of these expressions, uh, you know, apart. You know, it just it just helps them visualize it. So if it does, go ahead, put parentheses on there and go for it. If you're fine with just doing it this way, that's that's fine too. So um, so I'm just gonna gonna throw that out there. All right. So the two expressions we have, I mean, you can see obviously temperature less than 20, and then we have minutes greater than 12. So as we take a look at these. In this situation using and, you notice how if one of them is true, whether it's the first one or the second one, it doesn't matter because they're both false. That's where and comes into play. So they both have to be true in order for this particular value, this particular uh, if statement to be true. Okay, so that's something to remember with and. Or is a little bit different, so we'll take a look at or next. And with or, if we did this, um, and this one we have temperature less than 20, or temperature greater than 100. So this is a, a range one that we're using here. Okay, so we're saying if it's less than 20 degrees or if it's greater than 100 degrees, the temperature is too extreme. Or we live, I mean, I guess we're extreme a lot. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so so we have that. So again, you can write them with parentheses if you'd like. So you can see the little you know parentheses for each one of those statements. And you notice with this one though, the only way that this is false is if both are false because using or that means either one of these could be true or both and the whole value of the expression will be true okay so uh you have to uh, you have to you have to think about that and whether you use or or and makes a big difference okay now when you're taking a look at this over here so if we were you know setting this up with a, you know some type of math problem this will work just fine you will get a syntax error in python uh, if you try and do things this way, okay, it, you must write out the entire expression. So this piece right here, you know, this expression right here has to be written out exactly like this uh, because you cannot use this little shortcut method. I love this method of math. It will not work with coding. Guaranteed syntax error every single time. Okay, so be very, very careful of that. I like this little or piece here. I'm going to make that a little... We'll highlight on that one. Okay, so anyway, we have uh, a couple different things. Don't forget about this part, uh, but we have and and or that we get to uh, to play around with. So it makes it kind of fun. Now, let's take a look at this real quick. Uh, 
as you're setting these up, and this is exactly what, what these little uh, graphs were saying here, this is the same kind of thing. So when you're performing or and, if you know one is true, I, I think it's easier to see in this, where if they're, you know, each one of these is uh, for or, if either of them is true, the whole thing is true. And that's essentially what we're, we're saying with this too. So for or, uh, for the or operator, if the left one is true, the whole thing is true. Um, and this is the way that they, when, the, when Python is checking it, if the left, uh, expression is true or upright is true, so what will happen is it only checks that. It has no reason to check the rest of it. It just knows that it's true already, so we'll skip it. So it doesn't really need to do it. If this one is false, the first one is false, then we'll go on to the next one. And if we had more than one, because obviously if we're using this, we could we could do all sorts of other things in here too, uh, or even with and. You know, we could do and, and then we could add another one in here. We, you know, have throw this in and do and, and and throw something else in there so you can you can keep going for, for what we're doing right now we're just using two but uh but you can keep going it doesn't just have to be two if we're if we're using um and for example okay let's take a look at the not operator before we look at some code all right so for the not operator and this one is a is a little is a little funky um but you are at and, and we'll, we'll see how, how it's right here. But if we just take a look at this code and just read it just the way it's written here. So if not, and then you see in parentheses, temperature greater than 100, uh, then what will happen is you're going to go, okay, um, we're below maximum temperature. So the way that this is, is read here, it's saying if the temperature is not greater than 100. All right. So I will tell you that with the not operator, what ends up happening is you either love using it and you use it a lot, or you'll never use it. Um, and you'll write your if statements uh, to just say, you know, something different than this. So if you're, if you're looking for temperature not greater than 100, then you just write it out that way. Uh, so you may not you may not use the not at all. Okay. So for example, if we were if we were to put this in here, and I just I don't know, roll down here, I could say something like this. So if uh, temperature, I don't know why I didn't read that. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Same thing, right? So if, oops, terrible, terrible. Come on, Microsoft. Uh, so if temperature less than 100, this is the same thing as this, right? So um, again, that's why I say s some people love this style and using this, and other people will never ever use it, and they just write the code this way. Okay. So um, anyway, that that's uh, th that's that. So you can play with it a little bit if you'd like. All right, we'll we'll leave it at that. Okay, so on the next slide, we're going to take, uh, I added this little piece in here too, to just to make it a little bit simpler to see. But on the next slide, if um, you take a look at this, uh, checking numeric ranges with logical operators, uh, you will see these are useful for checking within a range with and or outside of a range with or. So here's the way this works, and, and this is great. I just use x just to keep it simple and keep the line short. But if we're taking a look at this and we say um, x greater than or equal to 10, and in other words, if, so if x is greater than or equal to 10 and x is less than or equal to 20, okay, that's checking within a certain range, so between 10 and 20, all right? Again, we cannot use this method. This is perfectly fine in math, this will not work in Python, okay? Syntax error every time. All right, so that lets us check within a range. To check if it's outside of a range, we can do the same thing down here. So we could say if x is less than 10 or x is greater than 20, so meaning out, you know, uh, under 10, greater than 20, so we're checking outside of a range, um, then we do something, right? So this will not work. Okay, so again, I'm just throwing it out there. So if you're checking outside of a range, you'll use or. If you're checking in a range, you'll use and. So if you're looking for a number between 1 and 10 from a user, so, you know, if you want to input a number between 1 and 10, you'll use and with something like this, okay? So or is something different. You saw that used with the temperature thing. So if it's less than 20 degrees or greater than 100, you know, we're in an extreme range. Uh, and, and that gives us a uh, something to... To look at there for for outside of a range um, to compare things to okay so you take a look at that now i want to bring back this one uh in this particular program so we have uh this program from before remember we're looking to see if you qualify for a loan and to qualify for a loan you had to have worked two, a minimum of two years and made at least thirty thousand dollars a year 
for your annual salary. It asks both of those from the user, and then we compare. Now, when we did the if statements earlier, remember they both have to be true. So this first one that, that we're checking out, I'm, I want to see, you can see and written here, but I also put it in as or, and I want to show you the difference, okay? So let me go ahead and bring the code up. Okay, so here we are with and. So the way that the logic of this reads, and if you if you check this out, you'll see. So it says, if salary is greater than the minimum salary, meaning more than $30,000, and the years on the job is greater than the minimum years, which is two, uh, then boom, we qualify for the loan, okay? So both of those are true with and. If you wrote the same code, this is a correct statement, but this is a logical error. So the computer doesn't know that there's an error here, but there is an error here. So using or, we could, in this situation, the salary could be greater than minimum salary, but the years on the job might not be at enough, right? So it might be less than two. Uh, same thing over here. We might have worked there four years, but we're only making $25,000 a year, okay? So, uh, and again, it would be true. So be very careful with these because this, like I said, is a logic error. The computer will not catch this. Uh, and both of these were required to be true in order for this particular program and this particular loan to be qualified. So uh, you have to you have to really pay attention to that. Okay, so um, so so take a look at those. I, I think you once you play with them a little bit, you kind of get the hang of it. And I want to show you this particular program. You're you're going to be doing this one for sure. And it's a little like book club thing, saying you get you know based on the amount of books you purchase a month, you get the following. Uh, you know, points, and then you're going to use those points later to get free stuff, apparently, right? Uh, and so if you take a look at this, now there's different ways of writing these, but I'll give you an example. So if we're considering, look at the five-point range when you're writing this, okay? So if you're thinking about a statement to write for this, uh, you could use or for this, all right? So again, you could use, you know, greater than, less, and all that kind of good stuff, or you could just say simply, uh, you know, if uh, books, assuming that might be the uh, variable name that you'd use uh, if books equals two and remember two equal signs uh, if books equals two or books equals two equal signs uh, three then you'll get five points okay so um, so that's that's just one example of how you might use that uh, in order to get this to work obviously when you get to eight you're going to use greater than because you're not going to say if it, you know equals eight or nine or ten or whatever you know so you're going to use greater than here but uh, this just gives you an, an, an option for this. So um, I would, you know, consider using or for these uh, to, to get that part done. All right. One last little thing. Uh, I know this is a little bit lengthy, but I just want to, the next little section, there's not much to it. Uh, so let's take a look at 3.6. And 3.6, there's only two slides. Uh, so Boolean variables. And again, this is just true, false. We've been using this. Uh, using a bool data type uh, in Python, we don't have to, you know, of course, uh, define those but uh, we're using these and sometimes we'll use them as a flag so what a flag will do is if you set it to false then the condition doesn't exist if you set it to true it will exist so sometimes we'll set a little flag for that and the easiest way I think to see that is to look at it in code and again this is one of those things where you may never use this but I just wanted to show you so you could see how it works so if we are testing this and we're setting this up uh, we're saying if sales are greater than fifty thousand dollars, I don't know why, but remember we looked at sales quota before uh, to get a bonus. So if sales greater than or equal to fifty thousand dollars, then the sales quota met is true. Okay, so we're setting that, uh, you know, assigning a true value there. Okay, or else, you know, we've got false here. All right, so later in the code, you see this statement. So you see if sales quota met, and then just a colon, and then we'll say if sales quota met. That's the same thing as saying if sales quota met equals true we just don't have to put that on there uh, because we set it up as true already and it will then print that out again this is something you might want to play with this a little bit once you've kind of got the hang of the other stuff but um, you're probably not going to really use this too much but i just wanted to see it and understand kind of how it works okay so but you will definitely use and and or uh in your in your coding this week and in the future when you're using decision structures for sure so uh, matter of fact you will love using them they save you a lot of extra typing so i don't know i just like it so uh all right enjoy and have fun coding the programs this week